Hello, everyone. This is Veronica Tracy Smith. I'm actually here with Nevin Valentine and Daryl Holdway, and we're going to be talking about relationships and couple circles. And I have to say I'm really excited about this. I don't know much about couple circles, and I'm excited to find out. So whether you're um, calling from somewhere around the world, we're in California, around um, in the States, or um, if you're calling from Canada, I know we have a lot of people on Raising Consciousness Now and Consciousness Now TV that visit us from all over the world. So we're excited to have you today. So what we're going to do, I'm going to introduce uh, Nevin and Daryl, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about them. And then uh, we're going to let them talk to us and teach us about couple circles and and um, possibly dialoguing with your partner. And then we're going to get to some questions. So hang on to the end because I think Nevin and Daryl have uh, an exciting thing to offer at the end. And if you're listening to this after the fact, um, they're going to give you information on how to sign up for their newsletter and all of that. So thank you so much, Nevin and Daryl, for being here today. I'm really excited to be here with you and learn more from you as well. Thank you so much, Veronica. It's great to be with you. Thank you, Veronica, and thank you for everything you've done in Raising Consciousness Now. It's such a service to our world. Oh, Wonderful. you're welcome. And you guys are really part of that, too, which is exciting. Thank you. So um, let me tell you a little bit about these two wonderful, wonderful people. Uh, these two people just radiate love and caring. I, ha- I can tell you that. I've been in their presence um, quite a few times, and I consider them my friends. And Daryl's also helped me with uh, the video creation now, and, and that's been exciting. Um, so Nevin Valentine and Daryl Holdaway, they're relationship coaches. They mentor couples and help them achieve shared vision and a deeper connection. They believe that each of us is drawn to the perfect partner for growth and healing and that conflict is the greatest opportunity to regain our wholeness. They teach the international dialogue, a transformational, I mean, excuse me, intentional dialogue, a transformational communication process that promotes understanding, validation, and empathy. This skill is also the primary tool they use in the workshops they lead. They co-facilitate couple circles, which we're going to learn about today. Um, These circles are made up of couples seeking a more conscious relationship, and that's what we're all about at Raising Consciousness Now and Consciousness Now TV is how we can raise the consciousness on the planet. And they are two people who've really been involved in that um, on many different levels, including doing video editing. (laughs) Thank you, Daryl. The couple circle is a safe environment for becoming known on a deeper level and creating a more fulfilling connection. Sharing the experience of the couple circle is one of their passions. Nevin and Daryl practice a daily ritual that includes a reading and a recitation of their relationship vision, which I just think is so beautiful. Uh, Their journey includes over 10 years of workshops, conferences, and training, and took them to the home of Harville Hendricks and Helen LaKelly Hunt in New Mexico, where they founded and later became presidents of Imago Couples International. Soon after, they became certified as relationship coaches through Relationship Coaching Institute. Nevin and Daryl are dedicating to promoting a society in which love overcomes fear, a culture where people are validated for who they are and encouraged to reach their highest potential, and a world where reactivity is met with curiosity and compassion. And we all have our reactivity, and that is such a beautiful way to look at it, to know that we all have places that um, we have buttons that get pushed and we react. And it's such a growth edge for us. And I know you guys are going to be talking about that. So um, without me talking anymore, I just want to say as a marriage and family therapist, psychologist, and uh, executive coach, I am really excited to learn more. And I have that training, and I don't know anything about couple circles, so I'm really excited to learn. So um, just handing it over to both of you now. Thank you so much. We are so excited to tell people about couple circles. It's meant a lot to us in our practice and in our in our personal lives as well, being in, in them and in facilitating them. And we also want to let people know out there that if they're interested in learning more about couple circles after today or about our relationship work, they can go on to our website at www.mentorcouple.com 
And for those of you who want to continue to become friends and associates and perhaps clients, do sign up for our newsletter. And we're going to be offering today, uh, we're going to do a drawing. We're going to be offering a free consultation so you'll get a chance to know us and maybe learn uh, about what we do and how we can help you. So please sign up for our newsletter. We'll draw your name out of the hat and we'll become closer within within hours, I'm sure. So um, please do that. And now we're going to talk to you about the couple circle, which is is really something that's it's a little bit new for a lot of people because um, it's a relatively new concept. I think probably in the last 10 or 15 years, it's become somewhat prevalent uh, in in our coaching circles. We first found out about it in, it's been about 12 years now, and we started our first couple circle with a group of friends in 2005, and it meant monthly for over six years. So that alone, I think, is a testament to the power and the importance and the value of being in a group of, of peers that you can actually um, communicate with, share your own life stories, share your conflicts and your challenges in your relationship. And, and with a couple circle, which is really made up of committed couples, conscious couples who want to deepen their relationship and and meet on a regular basis. It doesn't have to be necessarily monthly. It can be weekly. It can be twice a month. Whatever you decide on, and you do it in the in the comfort of your own home, with with a group of people that can be your friends, people that you've known for a while, or it could form just incidentally through people that you've met at workshops, um, you know, through your other community um, friendships. But the idea is to have four or five, six couples come together and have a structured format where you'll you'll gain peer support, you'll be able to tell your tell your stories and to be able to to learn too from others that that have many of the similar types of um, things going on in their lives. It's it's kind of surprising that when you when you think of yourself as as an individual in an individual relationship with someone that has different perspectives and sometimes challenges pop up. Am I am I right in saying that? I, I certainly know that we've had ours and, and people that we've met throughout the years have, have had their own challenges. But when you share those in front of others and when others hold you in the space of of safety and of support and then you begin to realize as as eyes light up and people connect with you in these circles that you're not alone. There are really no new conflicts in life. Yes, we have our uniqueness and we have our own special buttons that could get get pushed. But when you start to hear your story being told by someone else or when you're sharing and, and find that other people are are really taking it to heart, there's an energy in the room that's that's so precious and so special. And so that's why the couple circle in in that in in many other reasons that we're going to share with you has become such an important part of our practice. And so in our time together, we'll tell you exactly how to set up a couple circle, what the benefits are, what it looks like, um what you do from the time the couples gather until they leave. So this will become clear and clearer. And as Daryl mentioned in 2005 when um three other couples from our spiritual community gathered to um, to form our very first couple circle. And Daryl and I were in the process of being certified as relationship coaches. So the three couples came together in part to support their relationship and also to lovingly support us as we boned our, honed our um, skills in facilitating couple circles. And what happened is that we never wanted to stop meeting. And the only reason we stopped meeting is that Daryl and I moved away. <laughs> Otherwise, we would still be meeting. And in between our monthly meetings, one of the gifts of the couple circle is that each of us knows that the other couples are holding us in their thoughts, in their intentions for us to continue on our path to become conscious couples. And what I mean by conscious couples is that we're aware of our triggers, we're aware of how to uh, respond rather than react 
and how to continue on the path of becoming living from a place with our higher self rather than being constantly hitting our head against the wall of being triggered or going unconscious. So it's very powerful to have other couples supporting a couple on the path to becoming the best possible couple you can become. And for us, one of the another gifts of the couple circle is that when we sit in a circle and one of the couple is doing the work, they're doing our work. There are no new issues. And so we'll talk more about how that works in a moment. So the power of the couple circles. And since Daryl and I had our own private couple circle going on for um, all those years, we also began one by one to facilitate, to be the facilitators as, our, as coaches. And that has been also just so powerful. And those um, couple circles continued for years until, again, until we moved away. And before we left, we turned them over to a, a wonderful therapist who, and they are still continuing. So that really speaks to the value of couple circle. You, it'll continue no matter who's the, who is the facilitator because of the power of the connection between the couples. Yeah, and talking about the facilitator, the facilitator can be a therapist, it can be a coach, and a facilitator might be someone that doesn't have professional experience, but ha- but it is is steeped in the knowledge of the Imago theory, which we'll talk about, and how to to use the processes that that we use in uh, in in our practice and in in all, as far as I know, um, Imago practices. There's there's certainly the intentional dialogue which Veronica mentioned earlier. And and we go deeper as the couple circles become um, a little bit tighter knit, as the intimacy grows, and as the knowledge grows. You remember that when we started, we really had no um, understanding of how the couple circle was going to work. We had We had some basic sense of what it might mean, but within a month or in two and then three down the road, we started to form what what we believe is the format that worked best for us. And we're going to give you some some guidelines and, and some ways to, to begin a couple circle if you choose to. And uh, you'll find your way, too. You'll find which parts work best for you and which parts you might want to eliminate or, or revise according to your own special group. But but really what this becomes with your with your individual groups and the people that, that form them is somewhat of a, a social paradigm shift. So instead of meeting around um, uh, you know a, a networking group or a group that that meets socially and, and has um, maybe at a bar or, or for, at someone's home or, or however you gather together and, and, and socialize, you actually get together and socialize in a little bit different way, and that is it's all about the relationship. It's not about where you're going on vacation. It's not about how the kids are doing in school. It's not about anything else out there in the world, sports or politics or anything like that. It's, it's, it's a change in the way that we, that we talk to each other, at least for that one gathering monthly. And so we, we think of it as a, as a slight paradigm shift. I don't think that you're going to um, have a couple of circles on a daily or monthly um, basis with all your different social groups, but you'll have this one special group that you meet with on a regular basis. And it's kind of a way to, to relax in the comfort and safety of a group of people that are, that are on the path with you and that are going to support you through any kind of challenges that you might be having. And many of you probably have done either some therapy, individual or as a couple, or have had some coaching. And what we see here is that this couple circle becomes a link between the professional help that that most of us at one time or another are going to to need or to, to seek out, and then the isolation that comes afterwards when we're no longer getting help in that fashion. And so if we have a group that we can count on to to continue working on our challenges, working on the things that, that might make our, our relationship um, um, 
less than perfect, then we're going to be able to continue. And, and, the, and the fact is, if you're doing this with your friends and with people that become your friends through this circle, you'll start to see a shift in the way that you operate within the world in your other groups too. So it's, it's really it's relationship coaching in your own home uh, as opposed to having a, uh, a trip to the therapist every time you, you have a challenge, which we also recommend highly, of course. We've certainly done uh, plenty of therapy ourselves, and we, we've been coached ourselves, so we, we know the value of that too. But this is in addition to that. And one of the um, tenets of the the theory that we use to support our practice, which is the Imago theory created by Harville Hendricks, talks about how it's really the therapy or the growth or the healing is really between the couple. So that's kind of the introduction to what is coming up next. So the what Nevin's talking about, I think, is, is the... The, the imago processes that we use within the couple circle. And we're going to give you a, a, the, the whole rundown of the format and, and how it works and how it's formed and, and sort of what the, the basic uh, requirements of the facilitator are as we get deeper into this. But we want to share you, with you sort of the passionate parts, the parts that, are, that, that really touch us in the heart and, and that, that we really see when people start to connect under these conditions. And the imago processes... Primarily, the intentional dialogue is is a um, is a way that we that we deepen our our understanding of our relationship, and the the imago theory itself suggests, and we totally see this happening in many 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 couples. If it if it fits you, you'll know it right away as you start to understand. Perhaps you've you've read some of Harville Hendricks' work. Getting the love you want is a is a is a popular and and well um, well received book in this area. And and a lot of people are 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 talking about the Imago process and and how when we are drawn to a specific person, it's because of of how we were raised. That is to say, we, we develop a perspective, we develop our own filters, the, the template by the way we were raised, the way we were brought up and we were, we were given much love and then there was other pieces of our life that were either stifled or perhaps not, not encouraged to, to come forth. And in our own individual um, lives, we had um, caregivers that that gave us what they could. They did the best they, they could possibly do. But they also had some missing pieces of, of their own, just by the way they were raised or by the jobs that they had or by other other challenges they had in their lives. And maybe we had three or four uh, brothers in our, in our and I had three brothers myself, and they got some of the attention. And so we, were, we weren't given all the attention that we needed or that we wanted at the time. Or maybe our, our one of our parents was a traveling salesman, and we didn't see them as often as we want. So we have that feeling of of abandonment, perhaps. So, so let me all, just jump in for and, yeah, please and, do. And also, um, because most of our parents really didn't have the awareness and the information and the education that we have today about how the brain works and what children need to be to contain their wholeness, their natural state of being. So much of us. Um, got parts of ourselves shamed away, and we got parts splintered off. Like we, some people have wounds around um, feeling and expressing themselves, and sensing and moving. And there's just so much of us that that um, have the possibility to be healed in the context of the relationship. And the, really, the purpose of relationships is to finish the work of childhood, to heal the wounds to finish growing up and reclaim our wholeness. Yeah, perfectly said. And and that's in fact how we how we pick people in this world is that template that we were talking about, the the images that we created and that, that created memories and they become memories and some implicit memories. And so we we consciously are looking for someone in our lives that are going to fulfill all of our needs unconsciously there's a complete other agenda and that is based on what what we were just talking about and so the imago suggests that we're going to pick someone that's just a perfect match for us and push our buttons and get those those 
pieces of our of our our personality and our and our and our wholeness to show up again in sometimes ways that are not so comfortable and that's where imago therapy the intentional dialogue a, a, a coaching process and the couple circles come into play so so clearly in 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 such a helpful way so so that's the one piece that we're going to really share with you um it's a it's a it's a big topic and we could take two or three hours just on on the imago theory itself but the one piece is that we want to share with you how the intentional dialogue works. And I'm going to just briefly talk about the three steps of the intentional dialogue. And this is the structure that we use in the couple circle. So there's five couples, usually in a couple circle, maybe six. And during the two hours that we're together, one of the couples will step forward to do the intentional dialogue and... and um, in our couple circle, we coach the couple circle. We, we coach the intentional dialogue. And during the dialogue, an issue that's up, that's currently up for the couple is addressed. And what happens as they're having the intentional dialogue on the issue, all the other couples are seeing themselves in that couple. They're seeing how that imago connection works. They're seeing how this couple is drawn to the other because of the um, familiarity, regardless of the merit, as Pat Love has said, that we're drawn to someone who often has the best and more likely the worst traits of our parents, and how when in a um, conscious relationship, every time the partner stretches and meets an unmet need of the other partner, there's healing done. There's healing done by the person who's getting their needs met, and there's also healing done by the partner who's stretching out of their comfort zone to meet their needs. Because often we're drawn to someone who who is least able to meet our needs because of their childhood wounding and conditioning and socialization process. So they get to reclaim their wholeness in stretching into behaviors that help heal their partner and the partner who's has, having the, the unmet need met in the context of the conscious relationship. It's all so powerful to witness a couple sitting down for a dialogue. And often at the beginning of the dialogue, there's a lot of disconnection and, and upset because of whatever the issue is. And so... We lead them through the dialogue and briefly how it's done. And you can, if you want to hear our complete interview, we did a, a, another webinar with our, an interview with Raising Consciousness Now last year, and that is available on Raising Consciousness Now website. So you can see the complete step-by-step -step process. But basically, there are three steps, very simple steps, First is one person is the sender and the other person is the receiver. And the sender's job is to say it in a way that can be heard. So the sender begins to say, "What's hap something that's hap up for me is, and the receiver has crossed this little magical bridge into the world of the sender to really be a container for that sender to really see through that sender's eyes. They put up on the little magical shelf above them um, all of their own reactivity, the story they're making up about what that sender is saying, and become conscious, their highest self possible. We often suggest that couples do a short meditation to, to really be in an open-hearted space to be a receiver as well as a sender. And so the receiver then mirrors, says back the words that they heard with the same inflection, the same words. It's so easy to corrupt the mirroring process by adding your own words or interjecting a question. None of that. You just say, so what I heard you say is, and did I get you? So that's the first part is the sending and the receiving and you then, is there more? And there's always more. And when you look into your partner's eyes and they're, 
they're looking at you with such kindness and they ask you, is there more about that? It's, it opens you up and gives you the safety to say yes and here's another piece about that. And when they're finished saying everything they have to say on the topic, and we always say just talk about one topic, then the receiver does a summary. So in summary, Daryl, what I heard you say is, is that a good summary? And then, yes. and then I would I would say yes to that. Or you missed a piece. Please uh, just make sure I want you to know this piece. Mm-hmm. So just to be completely clear that the sender is understood. Right. And then after the summary, then the receiver validates the sender. And this is the most this is what we all yearn for validation. That we all have our own perspectives. We all have our own world views. And when when our beloved partner says, you make sense, that's the validation piece. After you do the summary, Daryl, you make so much sense. And when you hear that, you just drop into such a state of relaxation. You're no longer having to defend it or stress over it. Your partner has heard you. And this is the key. It doesn't necessarily mean, and often it doesn't mean, that you agree with what your partner said. But because everyone's perspective is their perspective and there's truth in that perspective, you validate them, you make sense. Especially what I know about you or that makes so much sense that it would be hard for you when I'm so often late getting out the door. And I imagine then the third piece is the empathy piece. And you've listened as the receiver, you've listened so closely to your partner that you can make a guess about what they're feeling. And when I say, and so, dear, I imagine you felt, and the primary feelings, mad, sad, glad, anxious, happy. Mm-hmm. I imagine you felt anxious or scared or worried. Mm-hmm. And then the, the sender says, yes, that's what I felt. Or, no, I wasn't anxious. I was more hurt. Oh, that makes sense that you'd be hurt. So that, in a very brief nutshell, is the Amago intentional dialogue format. And we use it um, in the early stages of the of the couple circle just with appreciations too. So we don't it's the 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 whole session is not necessarily about this one piece, although it's the primary portion of the of the evening and we typically meet, meet evenings although we have a, a Saturday morning uh and it's a dialogue, not a monologue. So after the sender has finished, then the sender invites the receiver, would you like to talk about this topic? And it's very much the responsibility of the second sender to not spend the whole time in their as sender defending themselves against whatever might have been said in the in the first dialogue part, but to talk about what it's like for them. And this is such an eye-opening experience for so many people that I have seen in our couple circles, so many times people being actually heard and actually validated for their expression for the very first time or seemingly for the very first time, especially on a particular topic. So it's it's really an eye-opener for a lot of people to start using this new way of of communicating with each other. It's, it's um, to be... It's a safe environment. It's a place where you know you're both going to get the chance to to speak your own truth and and, and tell tell the stories from your own perspective. But it's it's a chance for people to to dig a little deeper, become more curious about their partner, about each other, and and to speak honestly from the heart, knowing that you're going to be validated and empathized with. Which, as Nevin said, is 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 such a wonderful uh, piece of this process. So a couple circles have this as their as their foundation, really. And so the next slide we talk about, um, I, I think we've, we've touched on this, the facilitator requirements. So you can just do it completely peer support, especially if you have been to um, a workshop on um, intentional dialogues <laughs> or if you've been to... Um, getting the love you want workshop or you have read the book or you ha- you have been coached by a couple that's familiar with intentional dialogue if you have some background that's great it's also of course we think extra wonderful to come to a coach that's trained in this 
Well, I think that the, the level of your understanding as a facilitator is important, and that's not to say that you necessarily have to have a professional leading the group. And and what happens, I think, in in many cases too, is we've started off groups, facilitating groups, and then and then, as Nevin said, we we moved not too long ago, and we left in in the hands of a, of a qualified therapist. But we also um, actually three circles, but we also um, had some people that, that continued on their own and, and, and continued with having had the experience with us to be able to lead their own group. And it's um, it's entirely up to the group of people as to what level you want to take this. But it's, it's good to have at least um, a basic understanding of the Imago theory and a willingness to learn more as you go along. And as far as the participants go, the more familiar you are, familiar you are with the way the intentional dialogue works, the easier it'll be. But we've also had couples come in that have had no experience at all with the intentional dialogue, and they did just fine. So, so let's talk a little bit about the format. Okay. All right. So now let's imagine you're in a um, someone's home or in a uh, some multi-use room, and you have five couples. And, a, and in this case, I'm going to have Daryl and I be the facilitators, so you can imagine that. And we begin, um, we like to start right on time, and we have a two to two and a half hour format, depending on the size of the couple, of the circle. And so people come in and take their seat in the circle, always sitting next to their partner. And the anticipation of being together is always so sweet. Um, the very first time a couple circle meets, there can be some anxiety and wondering, what have I gotten myself into? <laughs> and by the time they leave, everybody feels somewhat um, transformed or inspired or almost awestruck at the level of safety that has been accomplished and the depth that the dialogue dialoguing partner has reached in their dialogue. And so we we come together and the first thing we do is we um because we we have a spiritual community where we do most of our work and even when we do it otherwise we always have some kind of a spiritual reading we often read from Harville and Helen's um uh, book on relationships, the, um, the companion for relationships, a daily, the daily reading. It's a wonderful book. We do that, and then we or do a prayer, and then we have the couples check in and do an appreciation. And sometimes we have the appreciations um, done in front of the whole group, so each couple appreciates each other, or we have them just privately turn to each other and do an appreciation. And the appreciation just is very simple. It just says something that you have done that's in the last yesterday or today or in the last few days that has been really in the best interest of our relationship or helped me see how much you love me is. And when the when they look at each other's eyes, it's almost sometimes it's like they haven't really seen each other for a while. And they look into each other's eyes and they'll often say, Oh, hi, there you are. <laughs> and so then they express their appreciation. And the appreciation is then mirrored back to them, which is also sometimes um a rarity for, mm -hmm. for many of these couples who haven't done this before. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we'll say and and something that I've done that's been in the best interest of our relationship is because mm -hmm. sometimes it's nice for us to point out what we have done and and what happens. Daryl and I start every day with appreciation dialogue, and so we're we're constantly spending our day looking and being aware of what am I going to bring tomorrow to our morning ritual about what I appreciate about my, my beloved. So mm -hmm. appreciation dialogues are very valuable, very valuable to the conscious relationship. So then we come back together and we say, okay, who would like to, to do the dialogue today? And sometimes there's several couples that want to do it, and and it just in the almost ten years that we've been doing intention, um, dialogue groups, we've never um, 
it always is always works. There's always somebody that is ready. It's always the right time. And sometimes we have two dialogues, two couples doing the work. So yeah. we step, we have them step into the seats and we sit right behind them. And the other couples form a circle, hence the word couple circle. And the couples who are not doing the work, who are listening, are being absolutely 100% present to the couple, holding them with love and intention and absolutely nothing else on their laps or no distractions, just very focused on the couple. And they're holding the couple as they do the work. And what often happens, almost always happens, is the couple that's doing the work, they're feeling that love, but the couples drop away and they forget about it and they're just focused on their partner. So it's really beautiful. And so that so that's how we start and then the couple does the dialogue. And we always make sure they clear the topic with each other before they come to do it. And they you know, I think get that time to be the sender. The one thing that you, you did touch on this, and I think it's the magic of the couple circle, and I, I just want to reemphasize the piece about when the couple is in dialogue and where they're coaching them, the the rest of, of the circle is um, is just a big love circle. There's just they care so much. You can see it in their eyes, and you can feel it. And the room is permeated with this. We we say peer support, but it's a little bit deeper than peer support. It's it's a real caring. And as Nevin said, so many times we've finished the dialogue and had the feedback, which she's going to sh- tell you about the feedback too. And the couple will say, I'd forgotten all about you, but speaking to the rest of the circle, but I felt your love. Mm-hmm. I, I, how many times that has come up. And so just remember that if you take one piece away from this and you ever think that you're going to form a couple circle, remember this piece of it because it's it's the most valuable part of what, what we do in these circles. It's, the, it's and, that support. And the safety factor and the confidentiality factor is something we remind our couples every single meeting. Just remember um, what is said in the circle stays in the circle, and we ask our couples not to even bring up the topic with each other if they see each other in between meetings because it's it's a, such an intimate um, experience between the couple that we don't want couples to be thinking that what they say will be then brought up in a conversation right. so that that's really we have to keep it pure and and that what is said there stays there and no commenting on it that's why when we have after the couple has finished their dialogue and and then we ask them to turn to the circle and ask for feedback for comments and the comments that they give are about the process they're not about the content and that is kind of the most strict rule that we have. It, it it touches on the confidentiality piece because we don't want people to even be talking about other people's issues, even in that circle. The couple themselves has the has, has had the opportunity to share what's going on with them in front of people. But when we ask for feedback, they typically give compliments like, I really appreciate the way that you stayed so focused and were able to mirror your partner so well. Or I really appreciate your vulnerability in sharing this challenging topic. But or, have... or I really appreciate how you did my work for me. This right. is one of the issues that I have. Mm-hmm. Or I really see, oh, this really makes so much sense to me, without talking about what what their issue is. Mm-hmm. And that's something that it really takes practice because people really want to jump in and you know want to fix it or get their opinion and we just say that's off limits because that would pollute the process that's what's so special about this type of that's when i i I talked about earlier about a a paradigm shift in the way that we operate using the, the sort of the template of the intentional dialogue that is we we mirror we validate and we empathize and we also pay close attention and we're curious about each other within this circle and that begins to rub off. And so in your normal conversations outside of the circle, at work or in other social settings, you'll begin to become a little bit better listener, we think. It typically happens. And, and we, people share this with us. Become a better listener. 
Um, people want to share with you because they can trust you. And there's just a, it's it's a wave of of, um, of safety and trust that starts to permeate the rest of your environment. So it's 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 quite it's quite magical what happened in the couple circle. And when Daryl and I facilitate couple circles after the uh, appreciation, we will do a, a lesson on relationships. So we'll we'll just do some sharing of a skill or a tool or something that we want the couples to practice during the next month until we meet again. So that's one. It's another way to expand the depth and meaning of the couple circle. Yeah, I like to share with the people that they can also see um, much of what we're talking about is in a blog that was just posted on relationship, uh, um, raising consciousness now. So if you want to go to that blog and sort of get some reminders, for those of you who are, or haven't been taking notes, <laughs> I would be one of those people because I'm a listener, not really a note taker. But um, go to the blog, and as Nevin said earlier, there's a... Um, there is a um, interview that was recorded uh, with Debbie De La Cuesta, one of the founders of Raising Consciousness Now, um, on on the site as well. She she interviewed us and we talked about um, much of what we do in our practice, which includes the couple circles. So please tune into that. And I think that um, is there anything else that we want to share about? Oh, I, I think the sacred space that is created, we've talked about. Is there anything more you want to say about that, Nevin, the, the couple circle? Well, the, one of the beauties of the couple circle is it really fosters and protects and deepens the we space, the space between all of us. So in the couple, there's the, um, the this relationship really lives in the space between the two. That's where the energy is. And so we always talk about how important it is to keep the space between the two people safe by never criticizing the part the other blaming you can't feel love and and fear at the same time and so if your partner criticizes you that that's you can't there's no love there and so if you have an issue with your partner we we say use the dialogue don't pollute the space by criticizing your partner, blaming your partner, shaming your partner, correcting your partner, reacting to your partner. So keeping the space between two people safe is so important. And it's the same with the we space, the we space between all the couples to make sure that that is a very safe place too by always filling it with caring words, words of affirmation and with, between the couple filling the space with caring behaviors and um, knowing what your what your partner's love language is and making sure that you're you're filling the space with acts of service if that's their love language or words of affirmation or or time with your partner just making sure that you're conscious of the space between you mm-hmm. and couples are conscious of the we space during the dialogue. Right. Yeah, and, and I think that when we brought up earlier about this this kind of a link between the time that you're just spending in your own lives together as a couple, as a family, and the time between that and and when you might be getting some help professionally for for um, for your relationship, the couple circle fills that gap, and we begin to change our behaviors in our own primary relationships based on what we learn and how to be it's like when you're when you're on stage you act a little differently when you're in front of other people you're going to be on your best behavior and you learn these traits we talk about them we see the value in them and we start to learn how to communicate in a different way in the circles and then again that takes starts taking shape in the rest of your life and that's mm-hmm. that's truly the value of the couple circle i think mm-hmm. and one of um Besides Harville Hendricks and Helen LaKelly Hunt, ha- Haiti and Yumi Schleff- Schleffer, help Schleifer. Me, girl. Sch- Schleifer. Schleifer have been great teachers of ours, too, and they have um, taught us about that magical bridge that you cross into your other's world before you do the dialogue, mm-hmm. really leaving your world behind and being absolutely present with the other. Well, I'd like to talk more about the dialogue, but I think we're running to that point where we might be wanting to ask for questions here. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Veronica? 
Yeah, that's great. I needed to unmute myself there. I'm right here with you. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. All right. Well, that was, I know you really packed in a lot in such a short time. <laughs> so um, 45 minutes goes by really fast. Uh, that was fascinating. I learned a lot. I've used the Imago um, therapy for quite a while in working with couples in my practice. And to hear you talk about couple circle and how you've brought that um, kind of into a whole other realm, especially with, you know, therapy. You go for an hour or, or maybe two or an hour and a half with your therapist. Um, and sometimes, you know, I'd have couples walk out and there's they're still a lot of upset. They didn't um, get everything done that they had planned on. And when you have two people and a lot of built-up feelings, resentments, um, having another place to go to to keep processing is awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and it really keeps building their healing in between if they're in if they're being coached or in therapy. This is such a powerful way to to see other couples practicing what they've learned, and to also see how um, and and to hone, hone their skills as when they step into the intentional dialogue chairs. Right, right. That's really great. Um, can you tell me again? So you sit in a circle. You sit next to your partner. Do you just have mm-hmm. them turn to each other? Maybe I spaced out during well, that time, or they the, go in all the, the couples are in a circle, and then when it's time to do the dialogue, um, we have two chairs that are put right in front of Daryl and me. So Daryl and I are sitting in two chairs, and the couples in, is in front of us with their knees together, facing mm-hmm. each other, and then the other couples sit in a, in a sort of a half circle, so they can see all their faces to see the couple that's doing the work. Okay, and you say with the indiv- knees in together the because work. you're stopping the um, the kind of closing down of the body language. Is that right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's each, each couple. I think has their own little um, perfect space, maybe eighteen, twenty inches apart, eye contact, and and we we ask them not to necessarily hold hands or connect in that way. But they're but by putting your knees kind of right next to each other, it gives you that 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 perfect area in which you can feel that sacred space, that energy between you. We like, we like the couples to be 18 inches apart, so their eye gaze, when they look at each other's eyes, it's the same distance that was between the mother and the baby when the baby was in the crook of the mother's eye, arms, looking up to the mother's eyes. Okay. The eye gazing really helps to regulate your body functions and, and have you become attuned to one another. Right, that's the, the, the heart the, math stuff too. Right? Oh, sure it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. And one more thing, Veronica, is the thing, the magic of the intentional dialogue. I think it is a magical process. So when Daryl and I were first together, we would go to our, our therapist, Anna Marie Franco, who is a Bay Area therapist, a Mago therapist. And sometimes we, most times, I think we would come in very disconnected. And by the time we left after doing the dialogue. We were just right back. There was healing had happened. We were so connected. And so it's such a beautiful place of peace and harmony. And that's been our experience 99% in our coaching practice when our couples come in. And if there's a disconnect or there's some angst, by the time they leave, they have reconnected with each other and remembered who they were. Right, right. Okay. Um, let's see. I am going to put us into interactive mode here and want to open up to any questions for anybody who's on the phone and then also and I know people have already been typing in questions on the webcast if you have questions um, go ahead and type in there and I can see your questions and I can uh, read them and ask them so I just need to refresh so let's take whoever's on the phone first if anyone wants to sometimes I don't have anybody on the phone that asks questions but they type it in because they're in both places with your um with the online environment, so with the link. So any questions online? Okay, I'm going to go to the webcast questions here. Let's see. Um, This was asked quite a while ago. Um, And let's see, this is from Sarah. And it says, what does that mean? And what if my... Uh, my husband is not so conscious. I think when you're talking about uh, conscious, you know, the couple circles or people who come together as conscious couples, mm-hmm. 
you know, what if one person wants to go and the other person, you know, doesn't in the relationship or they're not sure what it's about? How can you um, help her out with that? Well, we typically say um, in, in a situation like that is that it really only takes one to stop conflict and it really only takes one to carry that consciousness into a, a desire to participate in, in either therapy or coaching or in a couple of circle or to do some kind of a daily practice. So um, there often is a dragger and a draggy to the very first <laughs> session of almost anything that we do, and it might be a ball game. But whatever whatever you're going to do, one person wants to do it a little bit more than the other. And we couldn't begin to take an individual search set of circumstances and and say exactly what words to say to that person to get them there. But just by practicing some of the uh, tenets of what we've already spoken about today, by being a better listener yourself, by, by mirroring your partner, by showing him or her how you can be a better communicator and be more curious about what's happening in their world and not reacting to their stuff, will oftentimes turn them around and notice they'll start to notice what you're doing and, and and maybe if they can't quite emulate that, they'll at least be curious enough to say, Well, okay, I'll go along with you to that take that next step. And you don't have to be quote conscious or you don't have to be on a spiritual path or you don't even have to have much information on relationships to benefit from relationship coaching and couple circle um, so I just want to make sure that that's it's just coming in and starting to do the work is what transforms the relationship. And and because the relationship has such uh, power to really heal both partners in the relationship, and that one of the things that Haiti says, and I think Harville says this too, is that conflict is growth trying to happen. And so when you understand, you don't have to be afraid of conflict or issues, but that they're the they're really the angels there telling you what what is up and what can be healed with, between the two of you. It's very powerful. I would encourage Sarah to um, to sign up for our newsletter mm-hmm. and and see what we have to offer first of all. But um, if you so sign up again, today, where, where you can sign up, you can go to www.mentorcouple.com. And then there's a, a page. There'll be some information about us and what we offer, and some information about the the processes that we talked about today. And then you go to the contact page and um, and just send us your contact information and click the button that says sign up for our newsletter. Okay, so and we if keep it someone, it's all confidential. Right. So, so if someone wants to bring their partner to a couple circle and their partner's not ready. And um, maybe it is a really reactive situation. You guys can do relationship coaching first mm-hmm. before they coaching. would get into yeah. the counseling. And do you work with anybody anywhere in the world, or we will? Yeah, we'll we'll work on Skype, and we'll also um, we'll we'll initially we'll start with a consultation on the phone, which is absolutely free, and we get all four people, all four parties on the phone. The four and, being Daryl and me and the other couple. Yeah, all right, all four of us. Right? <laughs> and and we'll share what the possibilities are, what what options they would have, and 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 give them um, sort of the, the the brief rundown as to to how to get started and how to start working towards a, a more conscious and a and a more connected. A and different. if you and if you um, go to our website, sign up to be on our newsletter. We're going to do a drawing, and whoever wins that drawing will actually get a free session with us so. that's right that's right that's exciting okay um let's see i have another question by tina um do people pay for this and i think she means the couples circles do you pay mm-hmm. when you go to the couple circles the couple it? circles can be set up in, in a variety of ways and if if there is a, a, a facilitator who's a professional in our case we typically charge about 50 dollars per couple per session now that that is um, it gives a reasonable fee, I think, to the person who you know in our, in our case, Nevin and I, for the evening, and it's it's not a huge hardship on a couple compared to, for instance, you're going to get two and a half hours of work for a relatively small fee. Now, we're not the only people that are doing this; other people charge more. And as we said, 
if at some point you decide you can do it on your own, um, really the fees are, are based on um, who, who's hosting. It might be as much as um, <laughs> you bring the cookies and I'll, and I'll supply the drinks. So it, it can run the gamut. But the one thing I'll say, it isn't very expensive, even when you have a, a professional leading it, because the costs are split up between the five or six couples. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, to pay only fifty dollars for two and a half hours and to get so much out of it mm-hmm. is really incredible. What you know, it's an incredible way to go. We've had our, we've had couples tell us over the years that without the couple circle, they wouldn't be together, and that's been a common that that has it has been so powerful for their relationships. Yeah, it tells you the power of conflict too, and how mm-hmm. difficult it is to navigate it without some help and without mm-hmm. having these tools. And these tools are just so important because we all have our perspectives, and we all come from, um, you know, a place where we're reactive. It's part of our human nature. So I think that's one thing that's really important to say is, you know, really how amazing it is that these tools, in a very structured way, can turn things around for people like that. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. And um, I just want to say to Sarah too is that when we say conscious, what what that means on a real practical level is when you realize, oh, I just got triggered or I just got really reactive and was very, I just said something to my partner that probably hurt their feelings, that I was defending myself. And when you stop yourself before you do that, defending yourself and being reactive. That's being awake to who you are and how you're how you're behaving with your partner. That's what we mean by being conscious. Oh, I'm, let me just take that second, as Cindy Wigglesworth talks about in her spiritual intelligence. Take a second, breathe before I react, and instead respond. So that's what that means. Right. It's the pause, and sometimes we can't respond. Sometimes we have to go away. And I know um, John Gottman has done a lot of research in relationships, and I've studied some with him. And he talks about like if you're really triggered, to give yourself a half an hour. That's how long it takes for the cortisol that just went flying through your system to calm down. Mm-hmm. So sometimes so much having... damage, so much damage can be done if you're reacting with that 90 deep right. minute heart rate. Right, right. So kind of taking the pause and maybe you need a longer pause. And sometimes, you know, life is just flying by and we have to react to certain situations and Mm -hmm. act in certain situations with kids around or whatever that maybe we don't have that much time to react. So it's really about starting the tools. Can we can we do one more webinar with with you you all the three of us talking about this topic? Mm-hmm. <laughs> because, yeah, we certainly could. Yeah, oh, definitely, it's, definitely. It, it's, just, it's the key to everything: just to notice and mm-hmm. to pause, and then to respond, or go and take, uh, like you say, some, take some time for meditation, or just to to calm yourself down and come back and and have a dialogue with the intention of getting through this, not being right or getting your point across just to, to be heard and to be validated and to be empathized with on both sides. Right. Because no one's really right in these conflicts. We just have different perspectives. Right, right. And in terms of calming your body, um, putting one hand over your heart and one over your the upper stomach there, kind of where your third chakra is or um, where your actual stomach is, can really be a calming thing too. It calms down your your blood pressure and your heart, and um, it doesn't matter if you have your left over your heart or your right hand over your heart. Uh, either way, just it's a calming way to kind of bring down all that reactivity and to do deep belly breath. And, you know, I, I know I teach the deep belly breath a lot, and people forget, you know, oh, gosh. So sometimes I'll have a client text me, I'm doing a deep belly breath. <laughs> I had that happen I just yesterday. took one. When you said that, I just automatically just took one, and I'm a little bit calmer because of that. <laughs> right, right, yeah. It works. It truly works. Right. Okay, so we have a few more questions. Let me get to that. Um, do you travel to help get circles started? Um, well, we would be open to doing that if. Yeah, it yeah. would depend. I mean, yeah. sure. <laughs> probably don't have Hong Kong on my agenda this week, but um, <laughs> certainly if they contacted us and told us where they were, we would consider that. Sure. Right, right. Um, and there's. Or we might know. Well. We might know of someone in that area that could do that for them too. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, well, maybe they want you specifically. <laughs> that would be um, nice. Let's see. Um. 
so getting started, like if they don't have a group around them and they don't really want to go to a therapist or they can't find one that does this this type, um, it sounded like the best way to get started with intentional dialogue would be to do the appreciation part. Mm-hmm. So, well, so I just want to kind of repeat in. back what I heard. So you have eye contact and about 18 inches apart you sit um, facing one another and you say something I've done that is in the best interest of our relationship is, and so you become sender, and the other person becomes receiver, so you help them with that piece of it. Um, And what were some other appreciation ones they could do? Well, you know, what what we do throughout our busy lives is we, we take a moment as often as we can, especially when we're with our partners in and think about what, how they're treating us and what they're doing for us and for the relationship. And we put that into our bank. And if, the one thing that it does, our, our memory bank, if you will, the one thing that it does is it, it it keeps you looking for things that your partner is doing that are really nice as opposed to what they're doing that's making your life challenging. <laughs> so <laughs> that's step one in the right direction. And then the next morning, or you can do it, Five times a day, if you if you have the, the time and, and you connect on that on that regular basis, take one of those pieces that you remembered from the day before or or three days before, and say, Nevin, what I really appreciate about you is how last night in class you you held my hand and you looked over and it just made me feel connected to you. Just the simplest thing. And so, Daryl, what I heard you say is yeah. that what you appreciate about me is last night in class. I looked over at you and held your hand. Mm-hmm. Did I get you? You did. Thank you. And that's as, oh, that's as simple so as it, is it Yeah, good? so sweet and so quick how that goes. And so, you know, I, I'm always about practicing the tools before you mm-hmm. have a lot of, um, uh, you know, before you bring in the hard stuff, really, unless you have someone sitting there with you that can help you get through it. Mm-hmm. So starting oh, when we have, appreciation yeah. sounds like a great way to start to practice this tool. That's how we start every session. Okay. We start every session we have with every couple. No matter what state they come in to our, our um, session in, we're going to say, well, we, what we like to do, we're going to get to that, but we think of something that you love, cherish, admire, adore about your partner and tell them about it. And it just all of a sudden... It gives you a better chance at at succeeding when you do start to talk about the hard stuff because you've made a little bit of a connection and you show that you care and you know that you're there for that person. Just a wonderful thing to do. Right. Okay. And um, I start my sessions and uh, doing coaching with something that they're grateful for. So that's kind of another way Mm -hmm. of doing appreciation. So Mm -hmm. you you actually have the couples go through the, the dialogue and do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's very just brief. A, just the mirroring, right. sending it and mirroring it, not the validation and, and empathy piece for the appreciation dialogue. Just okay, okay, I got it. All right, well, we're we're like five minutes over on our time here, oh. but this is so interesting, we could just keep going. Mm-hmm. Um, and let's see, there are more questions. How can we get a couple circle started in terms of what training do I need? So let's I think, that we, I think we've covered question. that. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. on. It's on the and it's also and look in the blog. In the, in the blog, there's some okay. information in the blog, and then t- to contact us by going to our website. If you send us your email information, we will respond to you, and you'll have then you'll have our email and our phone number. So we'll, we're happy to share any information we can with you uh, via email or a phone call. There's no charge. Just we'll be in touch um, regarding setting up a couple circle or whatever they want to do. Okay, that's great. Well, thank you so much, you two. You're so wonderful at doing such great work in our world and with couples especially, and that, that's a tough area for a lot of people, and you're doing it so gracefully. It's amazing um, and with such wonderful tools. So thank you so much for doing this webinar, and uh, Nevin and Daryl are our people of the month. We usually say person of the month for raising consciousness now, um, and they're going to continue to do blogs. They're part of us. You can also find their information on raisingconsciousnessnow.com and uh, go to the contributors, and you can go right to their page. So thank you so much, and you guys take care. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you next month with um, our next webinar, and that is going to be 
June 27th, I believe. It's 10 a.m. All right. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Veronica. You're welcome.